Wishing you all health and safety uh, on behalf of the People's Go Talk Show. Uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Cesar Chonleyi, and I'll be moderator for this evening. And every Sunday at 7 p.m., we we have the People's Go Talk Show. We are, we have, we have been, uh, you know, transmitting over 70 episodes under this program. As a People's Go team, we, we are trying to help people support in gain, gaining the right to ideology and the way of thought in this uh, in, the, in this revolution. That's why we have been presenting this program. So for today's for program, we will be discussing um, a very important topic, which is uh, to in honor of the honor of the Nas International Women's Day, which falls on the 8th of March. So, so in honor of the International Women's Day, it's a day where we will uh, to honor women and their, their important role that they play as well as on the, what is needed for the future, as well as what kind of support is needed for women. This is also the occasion also to provide our support for the women in general. So the two, this year for this year for 2023, international slogan for the International Women's Day is Embrace Equity. So we will be using this uh, slogan title as in honor of the International Women's Day. So the Bible School team and the Sisters to Sister have been working together to discuss under this topic of embrace equity, using equity to try to fight for the uh, for for the justice of our people. So when we say that equity is the word, a special word that we have put in uh, to discuss, and you also notice that uh, when we say equity or miatamu in Yama language, what is equity? How do you understand equity? We also would like to understand from our audience as well. So we have provided the Zoom link um, on the on the for the on the on our live stream page. So feel free to join us as well. So equity is a word we often heard in the national anthem of Myanmar, or we often talk about justice, equity. Often these are the words that are that are being used together, and this is also something uh, that a very popular demand that people have been always asking for. And out of this, um, you know, word for the justice and equity. What do you mean by equity? And that we also have noted that uh, equity is important in a in a revolution. That equi that uh, that what is also the difference. Between between equity and equality. So, so we, when we are fighting for equality, we also talk about the importance of equity. Equity must be taken into consideration. As I said, there's often a point made by the by the uh, by 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 experts as well. In Myanmar, Myanmar is a country of diversity where we have diverse uh, that uh, cultural traditions as well as other norms um, that uh, and different backgrounds. And people are given uh, different rights as they are born to do their particular community, the rights that they have received, or that the the, the, the community they have grown very different so sometimes uh, when they have such difference that it can also lead to the gaps in terms of uh, the rights that they are they are entitled to so the idea is it is also important for us to recognize such gaps and that uh, we will that will be able to contribute towards uh, towards equity in the future nation only when the society have equity we can build a nation of equity so that is uh, the message that we like to give uh, from People's school team and sister to sister in today's uh, in today's uh, talk show program. Here we have invited speakers who will be able to share about their life experience as well as on the updates of the challenges that women are facing on the ground. So they will be sharing their experience and then tell what is happening on the ground. And we also like to listen from audience. So please feel free to join us on the Zoom and share your own experience as well. So here we have invited uh, that uh, that women who have been part of the revolution uh, contributing in different so the first person I would like to introduce is Dr. Mia Weiji, who is a CDM, a CDM a that a surgeon, and that and second um, second speaker is Kendana Mo, who is a member of the HWM as well as on the um, the mem as well the mem a trade unionist, and we have the Dr. Kemba Barton, a CDM captain. Uh, so these are the three speakers who will be sharing us, and we'd like to request you to join us once again so that you can participate in exchange your ideas. Ideas or the ideas or the you know that, that on the topic of equality. So first of all, before we go and give the chance for the speaker to present, I would like to uh, show you a short documentary about the International Women's Day. Please enjoy it. Mm -hmm. 
the history of International Women's Day dates from the 1900s. Now, in the 1900s, women have been oppressed and women have faced uh, different forms of oppression, such as not, not to have access to education or not being able to vote. So that women had started to challenge to, uh, to address these in uh, this um, there's all these uh, that are uh, oppressions. In 1908, over 150,000 women from the garment factory in New York uh, has requested uh, to reduce their work hours and to increase wages and to ask for the right for vote. These women have uh, fight for, had fought, uh, had fought for their rights, equal, for equality and recognition of their efforts. International that um, German, um, uh, Clarissa King, uh, the German, um, one of the German um, Democratic Party leaders, had proposed on the the International Women's uh, for International Women Forum and uh, proposed to organize the International Women Day, and that um, that proposal was accepted. And since 1911, International Women Day was celebrated every year. Thank you for watching this short documentary. This documentary is about the history of uh, International Women's Day and the song of the, the song that we have listened to in the very beginning. This is a special song in honor of the this year revolution and also to give homage to the women um, that who have been participating in this revolution in different roles from the CDM teachers and doctors and medical personnel as well as civil servants to the freedom fighters as well as on the others. We are actors and treasures, friends, uh, that we eat, that uh, there are also women who have served in the Myanmar military and the wives of the soldiers and the officers who have joined the CDM have, they have uh, contributed, um, you know, strongly to this revolution. To honor these women, we have, uh, we have, a pro we have a song, the short uh, musical video that you had seen at the beginning of this program is in honor of the International Women Day for the women who have been contributing to this revolution in different ways that they can. So that's what we have shown you. I hope we have enjoyed it as well. Before we start, um, that I would also like to give you a short talk about the situation of the women in Myanmar. The sister to sister, or a sister to sister group, has been uh, that. So the that, sister to sister group. We would like to also talk about the situation of the women in Myanmar. In Myanmar, the that uh, Myanmar, the women, women, half of the population in Myanmar are women. Among the women, that especially you can also even distort that distinguish into the young women as well that women have different ages and that um and also, according to the living standards, uh, they can also be, um, you know, differentiated into different categories. We have women in the grassroots community. We have women in the middle class. We have women working in the government or the other factories and industrial zones. We also have the women from the high class or that well-to-do is. In the women in these different social classes are also the, they are also doing their job and contributing. And this is something we all have been rallying for. Doesn't matter which way you are or which situation is you please use this that uh, you know opportunities you have for the that that's that's what your social class, social classes affording you to support the revolution and when we rally the women and it's incredible to see that uh, women are have been a strong women have recognized as strong fighters especially that uh, you know that women are participating in this uh, revolution the women are fighting not just against uh, the patriarchy and that uh, militarism of the military Hunter, they are also fighting against the against the, the social norms and traditions which are barriers to the development or the growth of women. So there are women, women have to fit many battles before they were able to participate in the demonstrations in the streets, although they were able to join the CDM at the workplace. Women have to go through them so many barriers and difficulties before they were able to, you know, go into the public movement or politics. So women contribution or women participation is in that way can be considered as incredible because they have to overcome a lot of challenges to be able to go to be able to reach that level as well. If we look at the military, military is a patriarchal mechanism. It's something that the experts have already have had, um, you know, that have have, have uh, uh, 
observe as well that uh, that's why when they, 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 this SDR patriarchy traditionalist and male dominant uh, institution, whenever women are resisting against them or when women are point out them, they would particularly target women, especially even in a conflict areas as well. If you look at the prison, that uh, women detainees are facing even more oppression and that uh, abuse as well, and not only inside the prison, but not only, but but also on the ground as well as on the social media and different social media platforms and military has been targeting women as well. If we look at the report uh, from the Nima Witness and Sister to Sister group, and that uh, we, we, we we can also read it about in details in the, the, uh, the report, which is called um, Digital Better Grounds as well, so that uh, military has been targeting them in the different ways. So if we look at the situation of the women in Myanmar, that during this revolution until 31st of December, that uh, 3,163 uh, person have been killed. Out of 3,161 civilians killed, we have uh, 414 of them are women. That in other words, uh, women, 440 women have uh, sacrificed their life for the for the freedom and the ideology, the democracy that they believe in. In today's, uh, and so that we like, I would like to, we also like to um, give our homage to the women, the sisters uh, who have sacrificed their lives in this revolution from this place as well. Because the women of our different different backgrounds or different ethnicities from different social standings who have sacrificed their life. It is important to recognize them, that uh, it is important to recognize them and that uh, and to uh, appreciate the efforts that they have made. Recently, that uh, I would also like to give you a short, uh, a short uh, overview about uh, what happened in Mandalay Obo prison. In that uh, Mandalay Obo uh, prison is uh, is a central prison. It said in that uh, it is Obo prison is uh, um, is um, central prison for not only for women but also for the but also for the LGBTIQ community. But also they also have interrogation center. Which interrogation centers are compared to like uh, hell on earth. In this slide, um, that and you, this is uh, these slides are uh, that uh, the statements issued by the based on the statements issued by the Ministry of uh, Ministry of Human Rights of the NUG, they have kept record of uh, that uh, of, about uh, 150 uh, wardens, uh, male wardens, have uh, have uh, raided um, that uh, that. Um, the women's uh, women's hostel in there as well. When uh, the, the when the women the prisoners were fighting each other, the women warden and officers did not address the conflict, but they brought in the male wardens and the 150 of them, and they were using that uh, they were using uh, that uh, iron sticks as well as on the bamboo stick. They were using catapults. They were using uh, that uh, as well as on the um, that um, uh, the other um, weapons uh, to target the political prisoners, and they were beating the political prisoners, they destroy their uh, properties and they would tear their, the, the clothes that they are wearing on. And then uh, they would also um, that um, you sexually harass them. They were, you know, f they they were attacked. They were also beaten. It happened in the in the February, but it is still going to happen. Some of them, some of them are still in hospital. So six person has uh, had injuries. Uh, the three person who got injured near the eyes and were two uh, got, uh, you know, injuries in their ear or the same the one person and has broken a high and that and so for those uh, who are the lawyers or the journalists or those who are supporting these women victims uh, there's they are also exerting more pressure on them they are also uh, transferring these uh, injured women prisoners into uh, other prison as well we are talking about these women is because that that uh, they that we, are, we also like to recognize uh, that there are political prisoners who are still continuing to fight even if they have been detained in prison as well and and here, I would also like to honor not only those women who are in the over prison, who are victims of a prison, um, that uh, prison harassment, but also about the other women who are fighting in this revolution in different places across Myanmar. So this is just a short, a brief um, um, update about what is happening in Myanmar. So to, let's go to the today's panel. Today's panel is uh, embrace equity to fight uh, and fight against uh, fight against um, uh, that uh, evil. So I would like to invite our our speakers one by one. Mackintanamu. Good afternoon, Dada Miawi. Good afternoon. Good evening to you. Good evening. Mackin Babato, hope you can hear us. 
Yes, I can hear you. Mm -hmm. oh, good evening. Thank you to all the sisters for joining us. Uh, that we know that you're all busy, but thank you for joining us and thank you for following us as well. And that uh, and and that I would ask for so first question. I would like to start with Mackintanamo. Yes, please go ahead. So that uh, can you uh, share about uh, that? Um, so as a as a central committee, uh, as a um, member of the central committee of the uh, Federation of General Women Workers of Myanmar, and I would like to ask about uh, you know about the women workers, women workers, because when the demonstration started back in February 2021, and that uh, that Deva movement was the strongest and the earliest to act against the military, so that uh, among this uh, Deva movement, we also have seen uh, also a lot of uh, women factory workers as well. So they in in fact uh, that um, that uh, grassroots workers had been a major force of this revolution. So I would like to know about your reflections at that time. So how how were how did you mobilize the, the you know workforce as well as what were the challenges in the uh, labor movement to organize the demonstration so okay let me introduce myself my name is kinta namo i am um that um Federation of General Workers Myanmar, FGWM. I'm serving as a set members of the Central Committee. I'm also a, that a member of the uh, Human Committee of the FGWM as well. That I would also like to extend my warm greetings to brothers and sisters from um, from um, our talk show today. We at the talk show will be talking about the International Women Day, which falls on the eighth of uh, eighth of March. So this is a this is a talk show jointly organized by the People's Co and have been sister to sister. I come from the industrial sector. I also have work in uh, as organizing and mobilizing of the garment factory, and this workplace is also very close to me. So I will be sharing. Uh, I will be sharing on the about the the challenges as well as on the participation of the women general work in Myanmar. As you all know that uh, today, that uh, you know that uh, International uh, Women's Day start from the from the International Women's Labor Day. Actually, in fact, uh, that uh, that uh, this is uh, we call it the International Labor Day. But um, it started it started from the uh, women's worker as well in Myanmar as well. That from the thirty hundred from the revolution of thirty hundred of the all, all field workers, uh, Myanmar in a demonstration started as well. In this spring revolution also as well. That it was that that the, the efforts of the um, that. Uh, of the Myanmar workers, general workers, who has started the movement on the 6th of February, uh, 2021. They were the first to bring it before. On the 5th, on the 5th of February, we have been rallying and, you know, consolidating the efforts, coordinating with the different labor, different uh, work, different leaders from the different factories. We have started doing the Red Ribbon campaign to say no to the military. And then on the 6th of February, we started uh, that, uh, that we started with the, with the demonstration in the street. And and that's the first ever demonstration in Myanmar that uh, and that um, that uh, that workers has been that um, you know incredible that um, the union has been uh, standing strong with them and that uh, they, their trust in the union and the confidence they, that workers have in the union and the federation to uh, to protect their labor rights is a, it has also had to support that movement as well because workers are used to with the strikes and demonstration as labor action because they have been pushing hard to for their rights to be recognized as well we have always been fighting against unfairness of the employers right now we are also fighting in another form of unfairness as well so we have to tell our workers that we are not sure if you'll be able to go home because we know the military has weapons. We have to tell the other workers, if you make, please make a decision. If you only want your decision, you have to make a decision. And when you're sitting there, please join us because you, you tell you have to say goodbye to your family. So we don't know if you'll be coming back. So that's how we have to say them, tell them uh, to say goodbye, to start with the demonstrations on the 6th of February. At that time, 
in Myanmar. It was soon, very soon after the, 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 milita the military coup d'etat. Immediately after the coup d'etat, the situation of the Myanmar has worsened. Myanmar women are even feeling even more insecure as well, especially the women workers, garment factory workers in the industrial so has been um, has been the worst to sit because ninety percent of the you know garment factory workers are women. So what is happening to these women is that these women are facing not only human rights violation but also the labor rights violations as well. That uh, to give you an example about the labor rights and that uh, you know it's like a, a newborn baby. A newborn baby comes together uh, comes together with umbilical cord and then how that's how the umbilical cord is the, the you know the what feeds the baby. It's like it's the liver rice come together with the baby. But but then what happened is that instead of nourishing the baby, that they are cutting that that um, you know until it's grown to get in small, the baby it remains with the cord. But however, with the when the military started announcing the trade unions a legitimate organization, we can no longer protect the workers. So that without the trade unions and the workers have more difficulty, more difficulty to ask for their rights with the inflation and that uh, and with the inflation and that incredible uh, rise of the basic commodities that, that um, industrial workers, they have to be struggled, they have to be working over time is almost to the almost to the point of death and exhaustion. What has happened in industrial zone is that they don't want to increase their wages, but uh, they know that they cannot, they uh, they don't get an increase in salary, but they are being uh, asked to do more job, more work as well. So that uh, in fact, uh, in that the factories and that workplaces are like uh, as if uh, they are the, you know, sweatshops so because workers are not getting their rights if the workers if the workers try to form uh, that uh, that uh, unions then the trade union leaders will be targeted arrested the military will came into the workplace to arrest them the military and that um, and the employers will work together to arrest their union leaders leaders because union leaders will speak for the workers, speak for their rights. So the, the union leaders as well as or the other that you know that the members of the trade unions that uh, they have to be run away. And a lot of them have lost their job for them for the, for speaking up against uh, speaking against they are speaking up against the employer for their rights. So, the, so right now since the military is in power military, the way the military has in power after the career the employer doesn't even want to give the legal rights to the to the workers that the rights that the workers are entitled According to the existing laws, often the pregnant garment workers are have to produce the equal number of pieces. If they cannot produce equal number of pieces as an average, uh, you know, average worker, then they will lose their job. And that if they cannot meet there, and then that uh, they would uh, punish, they were punished, like physically punished, that um, you know the workers were not being able to produce the quota they are supposed to. They will ask them to kneel and walk on their knees uh, as part of the punishment. That after the before the coup, there was some protection and there were some form of support for the trade unions and leaders, trade unions and workers. So we'll be able to ask for the workers a legal rights. But now situation has worsened that uh, even uh, that uh, payment, uh, they, that the uh, employer don't want to give any kind of uh, any kind of rights to the to the to the workers. So what the employers are doing then is instead of they would have removed the rights or they will remove their privileges or the the end rights of the uh, skilled uh, women workers, they will be dismissed for for any protest. And then the uh, then the employer will brought in uh, daily wage earners, which who, who will then in turn be uh, you know dismissed after a short time as well. So the workers in Myanmar are facing the war situation, and because of that, many of the you know, women workers have also have left the workplace. They have a lot of difficulty in in the workplace as well, and that as well. So one one of the difficulty is that uh, if they, they will look at the ID code, national registration code of the employ of the workers, and that if they are from Sakai region or Magui region, then you'll be dismissed. That you won't get job because these are the you know where areas where we are the most resistant. And if you are over forty years old, you'll be dismissed because they think that you won't be able to do the same work other. So the uh, women workers, they have no choice but to leave, uh, leave and do and leave to become illegal migrant workers in Thailand or Malaysia to support their family. And why they tried, they, there has been uh, hundreds of thousands who have left Myanmar to be able to find job. Yes, but, but then when they arrive in the target and uh, in the destination countries, they can be physically abused. They can also be sexually harassed. And since they don't speak the local language and that they are being oppressed, they are being uh, given very extremely low wages, and that. 
at us. Sometimes they even they are trapped in a situation where they cannot see a way out. And so then that's which has given rise to the suicide of the migrant workers as well. If we look at uh, within the region, Myanmar is a country of highest violence in in factories um, that uh, employers will call for uh, call for uh, overtime. The overtime, but there is no ferry, is it? Uh, so if the workers workers have no choice, if, they, if the workers do not go to do the overtime, then they will lose the job, and it's very hard to find a new job. So they have they try to go to work as much as they can, and when they came back, when they came back from when they came back from work is very early in the morning, and there has been a woman who has been a victim of gang rape, and they have been a, a sexually attacked, abused, and then now uh, they uh, they will they know they kill her, and but uh, you know she, uh, unfortunately she was still alive, and when she was discovered by the passerbys, and then uh, she was a uh, that in the that time. Um, and then she died in the hospital. Another colleague from the Bago Industrial Zone, where she was raped, she was raped in her workplace, and then they put her in a bag and in a parking and a package package. And then we people know that this worker disappeared in the workplace. Uh, she is uh, she, she is she is an adult. I know that maybe the, people think that oh maybe she must have eloped and she went away. But and then only one in the workplace, and they start to smell that the body starts the house decompose as smell. Only when they find it that the body of this uh, woman, the young woman, has been found, she had been a victim of rape and killed as a mother as well. But that also, these are the example of the few cases that shows uh, how bad the situation of the women workers in Myanmar. We don't have equity, we don't have equality for the women workers. As a women committee, that our slogan for is uh, so that. that uh, that women workers are also human beings. That's our slogan for this year, because women workers, um, women workers are entitled to the basic human rights as everyone else is, that in a, that belong in the society. So for us, women workers are also human beings because we are also human beings. We should be treated equally as a human beings, and we should be entitled to the basic human rights that everyone is entitled to. That. Um, and that uh, that it is that that's why we have selected this slogan to uh, to honor the women. So our women committee is using this particular slogan to in support of the women. So to the sisters um, uh, and that uh, from the ethnic sisters and from the around across, across Myanmar and other speakers who are here with me on the forum, that uh, please fight for the equality and equal, equal and equality and equal equity for the women workers in Myanmar. In short, I would like to say that that uh, women workers are also human beings, and yet we are not uh, we are we are not getting the right the right to survive, right to live, a right to make a living. We are being abused, we are being targeted, we are also being harassed, and we are struggling merely to make enemies to support our family. That's what I like to share. Thank you. Thank you, Makendra Mo. Thank you for your contribution because uh, that uh, in this revolution, uh, this revolution continues uh, strongly. It's because of the women. It is important to remember that the, that the workers have been the first to start it. If uh, that um, you know that in Myanmar, if uh, that on the sixth, the first uh, demonstration uh, against the military has not uh, started, then we won't know when the revolution would have started. So it is important to recognize, and acknowledge that women um the leaders uh, that are workers and that's all the uh, the labor movement and that we i think if we also like to uh, request our pe uh, people and the audience if you support if you support this if you suppose the slogan of the women workers are also human beings please feel free to uh, give your comments and also uh, to write to, um, that um, also encouragement for the women workers in the on the on the facebook pages where we are uh, streaming this uh, show as well that uh, for Myanmar for Myanmar workers to be able to go into the demonstration is that uh, that uh, you know that women workers have you know familiar with the labor action like strikes or demonstration against employer. Um, there uh, uh, there was always been dictatorships in Myanmar, and that you no know, it is not just the military who is said to take care, but employers can also be exploiting and can be tyrannical and dictators in their own uh, small workplaces too. So we have listened to the 
context of the workers in the workplace. Now, I would also like to give a turn to talk about the CDM soldiers, uh, CDM fighters as well. So among the CDM soldiers, we also have the female uh, that, um, you know, officers and that rank and file will be serving in the military as well. So I would like to give a chance to the captain, CDM captain Kim Abato. The, the wives of the soldiers and, and officers, as well as all the you know, females are uh, serving in the military have joined the CDM movement. Can you also share with us about the experience of the, what is, the, you know, what is the situation? What is the, you know, oppression against the women inside the military? And what's the context of the female soldiers inside the Myanmar military? Thank you for the question. Then I would like to uh, first talk about the women's participation in the Myanmar military. Before, Myanmar, in the Myanmar military is a male dominated. We only have the majority of the male soldiers as well. In the, in the military, you only have a women doctors. We have a women uh, nursing officers. Very, they are a very few minorities, uh, but later that, um, that there are that there are fewer males are joining the military, and because of the um, employment and job scarcity, so now they are starting to recruit uh, women, uh, women as women in um, instead of men, uh, so that uh, so so they can have uh, their women can also join the military as a uh, as rank and file as a, as a foot soldiers as well. If you finish uh, that uh, eighth grade, and that uh, the children of the um the children of the uh, current uh, currently. Uh, uh, you know, in service uh, personnel, often their children are not very good at uh, formal schooling. It's also because of the um, officers who are in charge of their regiment are not supportive of the education of their uh, their, their children of the soldiers. As well. often uh, that uh, that if you have parents, um, you no know, low level, low rank soldiers, you have to do a lot of work. So you cannot take care of your family, and then uh, you also have to do uh, a lot of uh, extra. Work. Work, which you are not paid for. For as a life, if your husband is a soldier, then you have to go and walk, do the housework of your his superior officer so that he won't be in trouble. So a lot of uh, children of the soldiers, they never even finish high school. A lot of them uh, were stuck in secondary school. So that what they, that, uh, you know, the senior generals from the military uh, know the situation, they are using it as well. So if you finish secondary school, they can join the military. Even women can join the military as a, as a full soldier. They they use it in uh, in the reserve forces. They use them for their local security. They were also deployed in the navy as well as in the air force. Later, late later, that uh, the female soldiers uh, that. Um, that uh, you know they were even uh, sometimes they are even uh, sending them sending them to the front line and that as it, often these uh, female soldiers were not trained for combat so that lack of experience and they were not they were scared to fight so they have to be sent back so they try to set even send them to the front line as well and when they of uh, when they uh, call for the cadets training before the cadets were only male but now we, the fewer males are applying for the cadets so they are also even um calling for women cadets uh, to become officers as well. And they are mostly deploying the Navy and the Air Force as well. And then if you are a graduate from the university, if you have a bachelor degree, you can draw, you can become a surgeon or you can become a surgeon major or there you can also become a staff surgeon also inside the military as well. So they are trying to uh, that uh, fill the gap of the you know, numbers uh, with, by, by appointing women, by recruiting women. But that said, although women are being recruited right now, but women do not get equal opportunities or equal rights. They do not get the equal pos equal position as well. That so that we I came from the I came from the nursing. I have a bachelor degree in nursing, and then I then I study my master degree in nursing. But they don't. And I in order for me to get a promotion, they do not look at my education. They don't look at my master degree. They do not look at my seniority. How many years I my graduate as well. They will just if you're a woman, then your promotion is very much based on a whim as well. If you look at the female doctors, uh, female doctors, uh, doctors in the military, none of them will become the head of a regiment, head of a hospital. I have served at over 20 years inside the inside the military. I have only met four women um, superintendents or the uh, equivalent of superintendents uh, that are head of the hospital, military hospitals. Uh, women never get a chance to speak up. Women never just again to reach the opposition despite their skills and the experience. They are Really being exploited with this one. So, in terms of uh, that uh, promotion and the positions uh, that. Um, 
okay the military will call for people like um you know that have who, who finish a, a secondary school and that uh, they, they they will give a lot of incentives that they will say oh you'll become a surgeon very soon and you'll become a lance corporal and so forth and so forth that you'll get the opportunity to you know sit for the cadets examination so these are the incentives they get so once you are inside the military once you join the military then no you don't get a promotion you don't get a career you don't get to you know you don't get permission to uh, sit for the cadets position cadet uh, cadet examination as well often female uh, surgeons as well as on the less corporals or the such type of sergeants and that uh, they will be um, they don't want a woman to become a non-commissioned officer so a non-commissioned officer is uh, like uh, like that of a, that of an administrator in the military so they don't want men to they don't they don't want uh, to serve and uh, women so women will not get uh, that kind of position it says well that uh, for is for the nursing officer for example like uh, that uh, even if we finish a master's degree that you don't you don't give you promotion they just say well it's not in the structure there is no structure it's just a reason just a pretext that military give because they want to they want women to walk fully as well we have to we have to walk in the hospital we have to and then uh, you know when there was a COVID-19 pandemic we're doing uh, you know full we're working full time and then uh, that uh, and also that um, you know that uh, we that before the coup they will also do a lot of uh, that um, uh, they, 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 they do also um, that uh, a lot of uh, public, public uh, mobilization where they will send the military doctors and nurses to provide free health care to in you know, order as well that uh, that for uh, they, they had always been using those who are the women as part of their um, you know their propaganda campaign as well. Now there are more and more women serving in the military. So that uh, and that there are so with more uh, women participation, we are also seeing the increase in terms of uh, uh, that uh, social problems as well, and that uh, and that uh, you know that uh, often. So in the beginning, in that uh, we that uh, uh, that women also face a lot of challenges as well. That uh, for for example, like uh, there there is no um there, there is no um there is no taking uh, to support the particular needs of the women as well. Often uh, that uh, that uh, whenever women um or soldiers or the officers or the non commissioned officers are here, they don't have a space. They don't have a space for them as well. They will just put them. They will just put them in the um in the in the housing for the married couples, and then there will be social problems because they are being uh, the places um the living place space are being missed as well so there are no accommodation accommodation for women to live on their own often they will be end up in a living in a um, housing quarter for married people or the single people and then often there are social problems afterwards as well after the coup what happened is they don't want to waste uh, the manpower when there are social problems uh, that uh, there were problem and issues with that then they will just they would uh, arrest and they would also imprison those uh, Get this who are found guilty and if convicted but if they were to if they were if there is a case has been filed against uh, for the adultery for example then that the, the person who is found guilty would be convicted and, and would send us to prison and then will be uh, expelled from the military so they don't want to do that so now they are even ignoring the social problem as well so women for women soldiers are fight uh, for serving in the military yes they are they are they are at risk their security has rules and although there is discrimination you know, oppression because of the when you are uh, once you are in the military you can never leave they will never allow you to leave the military unless you become a deserter so that you, for the women uh, soldiers um, that um, or the non-commissioned officer they have uh, no choice but to stay in the military because they will never get permission to leave as well the longer the the coup is the military coup is uh, the situation of the women serving a uh, woman inside the military will be worse Thank you, Makim Babaton, for sharing. What we have listened to uh, in this situation is that uh, these are things we have never heard of, you know, before in a 
before the revolution, we don't know what is happening inside the military. That that you know that 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 often the military is in military community is very isolated. They live in their own world. They have their ho own hospital. They have their own schools. They have their own uh, all the little um, that uh, small wall where they are. That those who are inside the military remain in their own circle in the community, and they are in a way separated from their community, from their uh, their from the country itself. So now that after the revolution, with the with the with the revolution, with the senior movement, we heard about the, what is happening to the women fighters, women, um, the soldiers as well, and that could be considered one of the the progress made by this revolution. We heard about what is happening inside the military. We hear about the discrimination, oppression, and when we say women rights, they are also part of the you know human basic human rights too. That uh, and that, that when we talk about the freedom, it is also important right, that we are not talking about the freedom of just about everyone. We are talking about the freedom of those individuals, in particular women, in particular inside institutions such as the military, because the freedom gained by this revolution will also be revolution for for the for the women as well. And that um, this is something um, that uh, this is a message we like to give. That the revolution will bring not only freedom and that uh, and that uh, freedom for and basic human rights, not only the people of Myanmar but also those inside the military as well. So thank you, Maki Babato. Now I would like to invite. Rodamia Wuyi, a CDM surgeon. Good evening once again. So in this revolution uh, that, uh, that we have uh, like influencer as well as on the experts and that uh, artists have many performance, performers uh, have joined in this revolution. You are a known influencer, a uh, woman influencer and that uh, and somebody you you have the courage to speak up and you have the also courage to talk on the important issue. Can you also share with us uh, about uh, your that uh, gender based and violence that you have experienced yourself? Off, and then what is the message you would like to give to our audience on uh, in honor of the International Women Day? Today, so People's Go team, um, that I would like to first say thank you to the People's Go okay team for inviting me in today's uh, today's uh, discussion, today's discussion in honor of the 8th of, 8th of March, International Women Day. My name is Dr. Miawe Ji. I'm a CDM surgeon. Also, the, that uh, so that with the, I'm also supporting the I'm also looking into the providing logistic as well as on the walker. Uh, so we are doing the fundraising with the, the that um, and the new fundraising team as well. So in this revolution, as a forensic, as an CDM, as a CDM surgeon, a CDM doctor, so there is, uh, there is. I would also like to share about my, the experience of the violence I have faced, and that, uh, and also the um, that um, the ex the experience of violence that the community from the, those um, from my community has suffered as well. So after the coup on the third of February, I started to join the CDM movement. That uh, the CDM movement actually in Myanmar started from the from the medical professionals, the doctors. So that we started, I started, the, so I joined the CDM movement on the 3rd of February. I am a social influencer and that uh, on my Facebook page and I have uh, rallied the people to join the CDM movement and to oppose the military hunter because this is evil, this is not right. And then I also have promoted non-violence uh, resistance movement as well. I was, um, I was pregnant, but uh, I participated in the protests and the demonstration as well. And that it is important to all of us to oppose the military hunter and I participate as much as I can. And that... Uh, you know that I that um, they have tried numerous times to to capture me, but I was fortunate and were fortunate that I was able to escape as well. And that um, so I was not a victim of to right violence, but I was a pregnant and I was have to run away for my life. So that I that I have a lot of em emotions. I know that they are looking for me and my unborn child. That uh, they have been looking around for me and that uh, on the they they make a lot of threats against me online they will also be very verbally very abusive about me and that my my me i and my child and i will spend all our lives in prison i will be sentenced uh, for life and my child will be killed and uh, they make a lot of threats against me like that as well when i started doing the fundraising and that uh, they said whenever i kept whenever they kept in the big chart that they uh, they they make they threat that they would rape me so many uh, till, uh, till many many times until i died from being raped and so on. So I was not arrested. I was not captured, luckily. But the threats and the 
the threats of the physical abuse has been following me as well. That's what I have faced. So that compared to the, those who face the physical violence, it's nothing because I only face the you know, online as online for online for threat as well. As I said before, the doctors and the medical professional have started the CDM movement, and then the CDM movement have uh, moved across uh, moved across different sectors and other civil servants also join. So if we look at the CDM CDM doctors when they when they join the demonstrations, we have uh, a lot of uh, young uh, you know medical students. And there we are seeing we have seen we had cases of the you know men that uh, me medical students were killed, shot and killed. We also have a uh, the kind the first the young girl to be shot at uh, shot in the head by the military in a in a public demonstration in Nebido. Among the CDM workers as well, when they there has been uh, that they have been a victim, they have been victim, they have been injured during the attack of the military as well, and that uh, and that uh, they that they were also arrested, uh, the, arrest the professors and the surgeons and those uh, emergency uh, specialists and medical care, and that for care for providing care to the demonstrator for giving care to those who have been a short and injured by the military. And Nyama is the only particular case where, you know, doctors are being uh, sent to prison, doctors are being injured, doctors are being interrogated, interrogated for, you know, giving treatment to that as well. And that, uh, and that uh, you know, they also we also have uh, you know not not that uh, we have a lot of uh, you know that uh, who are killed for God's of it as well, and that uh, the CDM uh, that. Uh, so CDM doctors, as well as on the CDM nurse care, no, the professional medical professional, they have been uh, physically beaten. They also had been, uh, you know, sexually harassed and abused. They were not raped, but they were exploited sexually in the Eteroshigese Center, in, in addition to being uh, tortured as well. This is what the experience of the doc others, fellow CDM doctors who will be arrested as well. There were also uh, not only the doctors, but also the other CDMers have been abused as well. And they were women also face more sexual harassment and abuse uh, in that interrogation center as well as in prison as well. That uh, and it's not just a woman for the LGBTQ community or the trans women, transgender women. If they know that uh, this 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 particular individual is a transgender woman, then they would abuse them even more as well. And that. Um, a friend, a friend, and also somebody who consider me an idol because we have some young people. It's LGBTQ, and they always communicate with women. And they are underage. They are underage. They are not even adults yet, and therefore they have been they 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 were being arrested when they are arrested for being a, when they was being arrested for supporting the you know supporting the PDF, and that when the when the soldier discovered that this 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 young person was LGBTQ, and that. Uh, they would, uh, you know, re remove. They were, um, you know, take off the take off the clothes of this person. They were put, uh, you know, the, they were burn the candles or wax on this body, and they were also physically with them because being LG being LGBTQ is also, you know, losing like uh, considered as low losing more human rights as well. And then the military also have been uh, targeting the underage children, underage both men, women, as well as LGBTQ. That um, that uh, they would abuse them as well that um and then uh, then that they would uh that what would they do is that they would have sometimes what they will do to these underage uh, detainees is that they will push them, they will put them with the hardened criminals and give carte blanche to these criminals to abuse these uh, young people as well, as well, like uh, the rapists or the murderers, uh, so to speak. So they, they were also seen uh, hard about the prison violence against their youth as well, that uh, among the female detainees, uh, there are those who have been, uh, who have been victimized every day and who has been uh, abuse and rob of their basic human rights and that there are many political prisoners who have been tortured who are being uh, you know abused in different ways by the military as well now that the military you know, there are also we have also have seen a major increase of uh, increase of uh, idps as well and that uh, when this military is uh, targeting them and that uh, as well that uh, that uh, and we also have that um, 
So what they are doing is that they were using them. They were saying that uh, the military is uh, that is um, you know supporting them. They would do the military. They would uh, uh, they would burn out the villages and they would also rape the young women in their rural communities. So these are the simply some of the practices of the military. And that they will say they are related to the PDF or they support the PDF. And that we have also seen that images of the stories on the online too. Uh, they would, you know, burn the people alive. They were tortured to until their physical features are irreconomical. The worst case I have heard is that uh, that uh, the, what the military had done is like uh, in uh, on the 3rd of March, what happened is a uh, that I village that I village is uh, horrible, and that is uh, it is um, you know like a total um, uh, you know that uh, it's a violation of the human right in the that I village in the that I village event that happened on the third of March, and then since the end of the February they have already burned the village down, and that uh, they have burned the village with the with the alleged accusation of uh, they support the PDFs and whatever. But the, after a month after the village that the that you know that uh, some of the communities who are went back to their village, village as well. About 50 of the military column, uh, you know, uh, that uh, raided the village and then uh, they would take uh, the, that uh, they would also uh, they would also st they will be looting the looting the village and then uh, then they said that uh, and they started killing uh, the people as well and they the way they have killed is that uh, you know they would uh, you know tie the people in the hands that they will use uh, the bamboos and they would use uh, the knives and the swords uh, to cut the people um, that you know abuse them and torture them and that uh, their 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 atrocities that the military has committed has been uh, incredible and that uh, when the day when they were, spo they were supposed to leave and then uh, and that there some of the 15 villagers were taken uh, taken by the military as a victim as a uh, hostages as well and they are including uh, the 15 people include three women and that are uh, three women and uh, that are uh, 15 villagers including three women were killed uh, when they as well they killed them they killed them it's like a like a game what they would do is these people were you know their hands are tied they asked them to run away and that the military will shoot them from the back as if it's a part of the hunting game as well that uh, you know that women, uh, the three women, they have been they have been raped uh, numerous times, and that um, and that uh, you know they um the, the, the bo if you check the bodies, you'll see that they have been tortured, they have been beaten, they are also being raped, and that the worst thing is what they are doing. They have after rape this woman, and they have put uh, in that um you know the onions. Onion is uh, one of the crops that grow in that uh, that central Myanmar area. They will put uh, bobs of onions inside the vagina of these women who were killed by the military, and that uh, so that um, although that. Uh, that um, that uh, the mill the mill leader of that was accused um, that as well, and they would they would um, they cut the body of the, that males as well. So that although well, when we say gender based violence, and that it's not just uh, not just women, not against uh, the as uh, not just against um, LGBTIQ community, but if, if even for men or they take if they consider under the um, they are because they are brainwashed beta that they are they have lost uh, that uh, humanity in the sense they are like animals they don't see other people as uh, that uh, that other people as human beings and that uh, they use the most atrocious uh, ways of that they are in a way they have lost the humanity that has a human being as well and that uh, and that as soon as uh, this revolution as soon as revolution is longer the as long as the, as long as the military is there they will be committing such as of violence as well they will not stop their atrocity so it is important uh, to stop that if genovese violence and other forms of violence that military is committing as well because with the fighting uh from the military with the violence that they are committing the atrocities there will be more and more uh idps and that more cdm as well suffer i think think uh, if we look at that that you know we need to end this fathers we do and trust we need that this public revolution to win as well so the amount that the cdm teachers are uh, that are uh, so that uh, although there's some of the CDM teachers who were lucky enough to be able to go to a third country, they will be safe and secure. But the other CDM doctors and teachers or CDM civil service who still remain in the country, they are being dismissed. And in addition to being dismissed, they are also they are also making sure that they cannot find a job, they cannot uh, find other ways to live. They are making 
can every way every way they can to uh to help them as well and therefore they uh that cdm uh that the cdm teachers are not uh, allowed even not even allowed to uh do not to be allowed to uh, have uh, their own private clinics as well and that uh, so they will use uh, that uh, and that uh, they will also arrest them if they are captured they would be uh they would put them into uh different uh different uh, sentencing and uh, that they were long given long prison sentence as well as on abuse and these are the abuses uh, that has been suffered by the community in general as well and that all these atrocities are not new to the people and if i were that um, and i also uh that when i went to relate about the violence suffered by the other communities i also feel uh, that very sad to, to said about uh, those who have sacrificed their lives in this revolution. So I'd like to end my answer here. Thank you, Dr. Miawi, for sharing, and that uh, it also helps us also remember what has happened as well, and that. Uh, and that uh, so that people might be uh, the suffering a lot, but I think we cannot forget about this. And that uh, that uh, especially is harder for the that uh, as it, uh, we has shared that for the CDM workers and that uh, that. Uh, and that uh, it started off with the uh, that uh, you know that it has also it's been uh, for the CDM doctors and uh, patients have faced a lot of challenges as well. And that uh, among the among the uh, nurses and the doctors, there are also those who were participated in the nonviolent protest movement and that they were killed as well. That uh, I think um, in in, in today is why we are talking about the International Women Day. It is also important to recognize the role of the the women uh, and they're from who have played different roles and who also have made their different sacrifices as well. Let's go into the next part as well. And that, uh, so here we like to talk about that, um, that, uh, you know, that now that we know about what is, what's been happening as well, and that, um, that it is important uh, to, uh, to, uh, to uh, it is important to, uh, that for the IGBDIQ and that all the men and women uh, that, uh, and that it is important to uh, that uh, that it is important to stop this revolution. Um, and in this in this reason, you want to stop from the violence happening against uh, and the violence happening against different communities. So here in the second part, would I talk about the ideology that is uh, encouraging people to stop discrimination or oppression as well, and that. Uh, so that um, and that uh, from this, uh, I would also like to invite uh, the other people to uh, that to might as well, and that, uh, that it is it, there are it is important to uh, that uh, uh, that uh, uh, that is important. Here we like to talk about equity in this, which is part of this revolution. Revolution is fighting for inclusivity, for protest, right to participation, right to you know for the diversity of people to enjoy who they are and embrace embrace the equity. So in a way, how do you? I would like to now talk about how do you understand equity? How do you? Um, how do you different? Def how do you define the equity? And that um, and that also uh, that how do you see it? How do you understand it? We are not talking about uh, that is. And that uh, I would also like to know, and then also to ask for your opinion as well. Please feel free to also to uh, write it as well. And that uh, so I would like to know that how do you understand equity? And that um, equity today we are here to talking about the uh, talking about um, the International Women's Day, and which whose slogan is um, for this year is embrace equity. So here the word equity is coming again. So we like now to look at equity. How do we embrace equity? How do we practice equity in everyday action and every day, every work that we do? So here I would like to start uh, uh, that we all will also be um, will also be um, that reading at the reading the reading in the chat. So please feel free to use the chat function also to talk about is as well. And that um, so when we are going into the part about the equity, we'll be listening to the our speakers that share about their idea their how they understand equity. I hope that you can all see this picture. Here is a, a very it's a visual um, image showing the difference between equality and equity. Because whenever we we talk about we we talk about uh, you know equity among the civil society organization, I'm sure you have already heard about it and see see it as well. And then please be free to also to join in the discussion as well. 
So some of you might be very familiar with this image, but the, for those who are who do not understand, uh, know the, who uh, know who uh, for whom the equity is a new. What I would like to explain here: this was we fight for equality and equity. So the the image or the left is equality. In other words, then do you to having equal rights for everyone? Like a three young, you know, kids, they want to go, they want to watch a football match, but they are having difficulty as well. And that uh, so some of them, um, you know, children are of different different heights. So they may have a diff they have different they are given equal opportunity that doesn't help them. So if equality, they give them the equal, like, uh, you know, stools, equal boxes to stand on. That's equality, giving everyone equal opportunities. But then again, when you're of a people of different, for in the image for children with a different height, although they get the same, but they may have difficulty as well. And that, uh, so for them, uh, that, uh, that uh, it can be also be difficult as well. So now we let's think about equity. And that uh, equity is a new ideology that came afterwards as well. So first, we need to look at what is the current condition when we are going to solve the current problem. You know, there are some taller boys, some are taller children, some are shorter children, and we need to look at the given context and their living condition and their biological given condition. We need to recognize that. And OK, let's say that. If there are uh, taller guys, and uh, you know, you know, even though we don't give a chair, he can see it. But for the middle children with a middle height, and then we may need to give, you know, a chair. But for the shorter child, we need to provide two chairs for him to get a uh, equal look. That is what we define as uh, equity. First, we need to recognize the given context and fulfilling their needs. And necessarily, that is the difference between equity and equality. I think you may have a clear picture here. I think uh, please feel free to share this uh, if you have your different point of view. And let's see other picture. You know, there are equality and equity, but on the real ground in the real life, and when you look at the first, second, third, and the last photo, you know, on the third photo, you will see what happened on the ground. The rich become richer and the famous become more famous. People who take everything granted are enjoying more rights and and on reality and the, the poor become poorer and you can see that. And the taller child got can have better view and he got more support. That's why he got a better view, and he used to with a better view. But the shorter guy, you know, he are not he is not obvious, and he, he are not visible, and he got uh, uh, a given context of a uh, second stage. When we talk about freedom, that we are demanded by this revolution, and when we are fighting for the the freedom that we demanded of this revolution, is that why we need a chair. Why we need to give in a chair? And uh, how about if we remove the whole fence? Then, no matter their height, they will get freely enjoy the football match. That is the development. That is what we are mentioned when we talk about freedom. Uh, we want our public. You know, I want to describe the perception of the public has been progressive by this illustration of this photo you know equity and equality you may understand why by looking at this photo from this uh, situation when you look at your domestic condition in your family there are different given condition between siblings and different family members and are we fulfilling their needs as their needs or are equally distributed regardless of their different needs or as a, a government or how are we going to how we consider uh, the female population of the country and then we can generate our imagination more and more so all the speaker we have invited here you know here is it and we, we are going to listen 
how equity is needed in different society and different layer of the society from by from these experts for that i would like to ask uh, a question for that i would like to invite mark kinderamu to answer this question you know we have explained different scenario in the past and now the public know our given contacts and condition and you know this kinds of uh, pre uh, pre contacts um, could be arrived from what kinds of pre contacts or given condition could today you know uh, we are facing this uh, incidents uh, and how we develop this mentality by facing this condition you know i would say there are three class of societies and they are grass society and they are you know blue collar and white collar and they are also blue uh, and they are media classes and including the expert in those high class and also there are pri uh, a society with a privilege born with a privilege for example like like a, a sect a related uh groups yeah. so when we look at a Myanmar you know Myanmar has been under the different military rule and all those military rule has been based on the patriarchy and chauvinism and they used a term that worship to the chauvinism and for the liberal and other LC, uh, LGBTQs and they thought they are the second class societies they are uh, automatically discriminated by this patriarchy societies and the mentality of this uh, patriarchy based uh, army you know on all, all our social lives and all of our educational lives and economic lives all this patriarchic sense of uh, dominant has been influenced all of us uh, for the label unions so we are fighting against the military detectorship is to fight against a patriarchism that consider uh, the labor community as a second class you know people with a good connection you know they they know no no equality you know they don't want to give a chance to others you know they are uh, that is the mentality of those m military operate and then since from our ancestral time we have been discriminated by the religion that uh, deliberately created uh, injected fear among public by those military uh, affiliate for those military detectorship they try to survive without considering any interests of others just about them so why are we facing this con kinds of condition our cultures and our traditions and our stereotype and our political given condition and because of the privileges and this uh, patriarchism has been deeply rooted in our country you know as soon as we born we got discriminated as a boy and girl when you grown up we also face another discrimination with the stereotyping you know women it uh, uh, should be hold a supporting role to the male counterparts and there are also socializations so women should do this and that and men should do and this and there also internalization you know women are the follower women should be remain in a follower that bring what's us and in the previous sayings of the traditional saying of the Myanmar society is has been prioritized the patriarchy and and and, and sometimes we uh, didn't recognize you know that you should worship your uh, uh you, you should treat your child as uh, uh your your boy as a prince and you treat your husband as a king and then you know a hand cannot make cannot bring the dawn that kinds of saying that bring negative consequences to the woman and women face discrimination especially when we they gave a mandate and their oppression their limitation and their marginalization their harassment uh, mentally and physically and sexually especially in the, in the political and in economy and when you have to make a political decision those positions are mainly dominated by male I think women rights should not be separated from the rights of the male. That's why we are fighting in this revolution to fight against the military junto. 
Yeah, so all the leader in the revolution and all the strike uh, falls and I would like to inform all of you that when we are fighting against the military gender, we also need to cut the pillar that supporting to the uh, military Honda uh, military regime with its uh, patriarchism, uh, patriarchism and chauvinism. We need to cut those pillars. we lost you. Can, can you hear? Uh, nobody can hear him, her. I think she got her internet receiver got cut. And what Mark Kendadamu has said about, uh, she also highlighted about the chauvinism and uh, patriarchism, uh, patriarchism and, and those, uh, the phobia against the female. And there are many consequences history you know that uh, male oriented uh, perceptions uh, uh, there are many women who has been suffering from those male oriented perceptions for example that you know there are the hatreds against the women the women are standing when they are make, making voice people who are irritated when women start making a voice and this uh, extreme uh, 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 patriarchisms are not only affected to the male population but also to some female population. As Mark Kendall has been mentioned about the privilege, uh, people are born with different privilege, and some took granted, uh, some take as a grant, and some have to earn to take that grant. You know, sometimes we don't see those uh, political regime has been blind us and sometimes we don't realize that we are in the privileged position but i really support what makindada has said before it is very critical in both and and perceptions and we need to stop all these kinds of uh, toxic uh, perceptions to create the equal societies that we are aiming for for all this uh, revolution as Markin, apart from Ma, what makindada has said uh Mackinder also mentioned about you know the marginalization of lgbt and you know that is very obvious from the military community you know how are we going to illustrate this and what kinds of issues we should we need to voice out and we need to raise and what should be our principle and and uh, to make a difference with them and what are the perceptions for that uh how do you see on this ground before we talk about the value and principle of the revolution, Makindanamu has been stressed uh, quite comprehensively, you know, how discrimination has been deeply rooted among the Myanmar societies by the military rule. In Myanmar, in order to fight against the discrimination in Myanmar, you know, this kinds of authoritarian yeah, and then common structure and hierarchy structure like a military should be end in Myanmar, you know, like a patriarchism, uh, patriarchism, you know, to end, uh, you know, uh, and then to oppress the other who have different opinion than them. And if we want to be able to end, there would be no end of discrimination in Myanmar, even among the public, you know, if uh, among the same oppressed, you know, women should uh act like this and that and when there's a rape you know that you know they said you know victim blaming rather than blaming to the perpetrator you know this woman wear this you know in a way inappropriately that's why they got he she got raped that kinds of blaming uh, including with the lgbt you know even though rather than recognizing that is their right that is their existence rather than respecting their uh orientation ex existence and you know it has been brainwashed throughout the time by the military and the uh, patriarchism uh, military has been you know uh, even in the school uh, don't teach us uh, we all grown up with the military rules or uh, the way they teach to their generations but they don't lead with the example as a role model and even though we told that you know respect other but we treat differently and uh, you, you look like a monkey or you know that kinds of discrimination you know our uh, previous generation don't lead us with an example you know uh, they want us 
to comply what they said, but they don't comply what they said. As a human being, we need to respect each other. We need to have a sympathy and empathy to each other as a human being, and we need to be humane. That kind of uh, common sense has been missing among the population and people. You know, when uh, people try to act the same, you know, when they got oppressed, they oppressed to the weaker one. When they got oppressed, because we are not able to escape from the military hunter, military dictatorship. Uh, all the free and fair democratic countries, they respect the human being. They are humane. They show empathy and sympathy. And they respect the rights of the others in democratic country. And they don't make a judgment. They, they don't have the right to judge the others and respect the rights of the other in order to introduce, you know, to, to be queuing up in and uh, systematically we need to have a democratic system in our country that's why we need to end the military that uh uh, uh, uh dominating uh, uh manipulating the whole political power uh, with the military concept with the democratic principle as a human being we need to respect each other we need to be humane we need to be empathy and have somebody and empathy to each other uh, not only a given contact and internationally they have their own laws and for the humanitarian law uh, what are the given context uh, what are the rights and responsibility of each citizens not to interference not to violate and to respect you know all those countries you know they are you know if they violate, uh, they are the sudden penalty waiting for them if you penetrate or if you violate it for Myanmar, we need to build Nyama from the sketch to the democratic country uh, with the open-minded people based on the democratic principle and, and we need a strict law who are failed to comply and in order to end the sexual violence we need to end the whole uh, the military institution to end the sexual violence or violence against women um, there are some error and as a NUG government you know, during this revolution after that the NUG need to uh, conduct a hearing or, or truth uh, reconciliation and taking and uh, you know investigation for misconducts by main counterparts even in even among ourselves not only in the military side and you know to ensure fairness and equity and equality as a NUG government you know they need to review all the who uh, all those misconduct as a transitional justice and I we believe that NUG government would do transitional justice process in order to obtain a justice during this revolution as uh, people who treat unfairly so the whole public need to involve in this revolution and, and need to contribute and uh, never stop on the midway to end this uh, the whole military institution and we need to root all this military institution from our choice to grant and equality and equity in our country so to free the whole country from military rules when we are building our nation and uh, that uh, freedom fair humane and uh, respect should be the basic foundation of the nation that we are going to build thank you so much that I'm with you. you talk about uh, uh, to respect to show respect and be humane said so our long lasting federal revo uh, federal battle that we have been taking in our country you know we need to respect the culture of the minority rather than you know we used to say Burmanization as a chauvinism you know that they are enforcing Burmanism to ethnic com minor com uh, minority communities and that's why we have been endless uh, uh, facing endless conflict armed um, conflict in the country that's why if you are believing in the federal you know you need to be humane and and you need to be humane and you need to have a somebody and empathy and thank you for reminding us for that as a next speaker I would like to invite my Kim Baba 
I think we can say there is this, before we go to the recommendation, there would be the last uh, uh, talking point. I would say, you know, especially for the women organization, they are pushing and advocating for certain issues. You know, in the military, yes, uh, uh, patriarchal system has been long rooted in the military community, and so that's why all the the female combatant in the military would respond to this. As Martin Lu has said, in the military is trying to build their own exclusive society. So when we look at in Myanmar, you know, in the, I think military is just of the ministry and one of the department. They are the civil servant, but they are acting like they are the, uh, and they try to divide and rule military family and community with the public, and then they are acting like uh, they are the higher societies and. They are higher classes, and they have been brainwashed. All those military uh, uh, personals, and have been constantly brainwashed. Those military personnel, and they thought they are higher, higher being than the ordinary societies. Uh, and but in the military, even military member, you know, some heads are open-minded and they see the truth. But majority has been brainwashed, and they thought they are higher beings of the public. Uh, public and they try to build exclusive societies uh, with uh, privilege. It's quite hard to imagine. You know, but uh, during the civilian government era, uh, civil servants are allowed to have maternity leave for six months and increase to six month maternity leave. But that's ah uh, and and housewives of the soldier in a military are not entitled to enjoy that maternity leave. You know, there are many pregnant uh, the the wives of soldiers. They want to get and to enjoy the maternity leave, but they are not allowed. Even though civilian government gave that six month maternity leave for those uh, female civil servants. In the military, they, they even thought that uh, giving three months is too much before uh, a delivery of one and a half months and after one and a half months of delivery, they thought that three months is already too much. You know, military uh, want to deny all forms of rights to the female member in their societies. Uh, that's why when even the civil servants, female civil servants step, they got six months maternity leave, but military side, they only get three months, and even military consider that three months is too much. But nobody there to speak out. You know, they are, even in the military community, and you know, their right has been heavily undermining by the military regime. You know, during the civilian government, you know, as a civilian population, you know, they are they are able to enjoy their right to a certain extent. But in the military, within the military community, you know, there's no democracy. Uh, you know, democracy is nothing to do with a military formation. That's why there's no rights, and there are many right violations in the military community, uh, including the uh, casting their ballot in the vote. You know, they are instructed to vote for certain party that uh, uh, affiliation uh, that has affiliation with the military. Uh, they have a clear instruction. You know, that means uh, violating their human rights for right to choose their government but so there are some populations you know who are used to getting used to whether military CO typing and military regime but for me I don't like it I hate to see when human rights is undermining and I don't like oppression when people civilians are uh, killing arbitrarily and uh, you know I cannot which land animal and that's why I have to make a uh, uh, U-turn to my life now there's a thing lost but I'm happy and I'm happy with myself and you know I have no guilty even, even though I make certain sacrifices after the coup but from the military side you know uh, many community in the military you know they don't dare to make that kinds of U-turn and then they uh, they are afraid of the consequences uh, and they don't have enough courage to face the laws with the change they make 
that's why they uh, continue to be enslaved by the military you know all the female members of the military you know we need to inform them they need to fight for their right they need to stand up for their rights all the feminists and women activism who are fighting in this civilian era and female members of the military community need to stand up and fight for their rights and all are either working with the CSO or or joining the CDM they should start speak out speaking out and they should fight for their right and that is my, that is you know you, you need to make a decision and uh, you know no longer if you don't want oppression you need to start speak out and you need to free yourself from those endless oppression by yourself now i also agree you know you know you need to know the rights your rights and your freedom for that you need to stand up for your right and your freedom and you need to find enabling enrollment even though if there's no enrollment that it's uh, 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 that enrollment is not favorable and if it has happened to risk your life you need to build allies and you need to look out you know Makin Babatun has been uh, going out from the military uh, and advocating for the rights of female member of the mili military female members you know there are many females of housewives of soldiers in the military community they don't dare to speak out but Mark Kimbabatun has said you know you need to stand up for your rights and we need to inform all female and all women you know in the military you know they are female combatants or and they are police uh, female police officers you know as a human being they have their own right their own inborn rights and they need to we need to inform them and to know their rights from where we they stand to do the right thing we need uh, Mark and Baba Tun has been encouraging to all uh, as a public to public but as a sister to sister we really uh, 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 appreciate and supporting what Mark and Baba Tun has said you know we need to know our rights I think this kinds of event would encourage millions of uh, our female uh, sisters living inside the country when we look at the uh, the female uh, population inside the country are facing and secondly we also listen to the uh, ideology that we need to fight against we cannot just see the human being there are also other physical uh, other, not we are not fighting for the physical and material rights you know there are the revolutional that we need to fight our rights and we need to change our attitude to change the revolution if not and it will be ended up in the the the, the endless killing it to each other in the revolution we need to change uh, our ways of thinking and we have been listening about chauvinism and we also uh, and we need to have a class perception that is also very important and on the other hand in the patriotism uh, uh, and you know that the, the phobia against the uh, female and then you know just only self egos also need to be eliminated and uh, and for the privileged community you know they need to learn what privilege they are enjoying uh, and their discrimination and victim blaming Or, or, or criticizing, uh, marginalizing, and traumatizing need to be end to continue our revolution. For that, as a recommendation, we would like to inform the whole public as a individually. And lastly, uh, uh, maybe you may have some hand raised. We would like to proceed to the Q&A. And before that, we would like to address the recommendation. At, we would like to listen about the, each speaker for the recommendation in the NUG you know the first time we got a, a woman uh, ministry uh, and UCCCFH and for legislation and policy related issues and uh, what would what recommendation you would like to make to different actor and you see and UGG or EAO what recommendation you would like to make from this recommendation I would like to listen to each speaker are you back
Yes, I'm back. So I would like to hear your recommendations. So please, uh, let's start with you, Makin Denamo. Any recommendations? As we have discussed, um, I think it is important to, you know, make progress, to make progress for them, for the rights of everyone. I think it is important to fight for the women's rights because women are being treated as a second citizen, as a second class uh, human beings, uh, and not only women for the LGBTQ or transgender women. I think it is important uh, to acknowledge them in the, in, the, in our society that uh, it is important to treat all women and transgender, including women of the LGBTQ community, as person of uh, you know, and and then as well as person of disability as well. It is important to see people as the same human being if we are seeing people differently because of their sexual orientation or ethnic background or because of their social standing or their you know uh, for, for their other inclination then we will be in a running in efficient circles it is important to look at it from a different perspective if we are only seeing other people as others and then different from us then we will not have a development for the development for a country for a society it is important to recognize people for who they are it is important to accept people as they are it is important to prevent uh, discrimination it is also important to open the doors and open and and, and ensure there is access for everyone for equal equality for for equal equity that uh, it is important to build a such human society based on this belief for humanity uh, the equity and humanity it is a responsibility of each and every one of us it is the responsibility of the government and the state as well that we are now in a living and a horrible political system so for for now, the new government has not been able to provide this kind of security. People have to do work our or work on our new get some form of security. So it is important to give security to all the people. It is important to invite the people of different opinions, doing workshops, organize seminars, and then you know collect information and about the voices of the people, and then uh, to give it to those uh, who are you know that we engage and participate in the implementation of the development programs as well as other. It is important to ensure there is collaboration and coordination and inclusion and participation of different voices. This also went to, it is important to have this kind of, uh, you know, positive and constructive participation as well. The world is changing and the, the world is, uh, if you look at the, what is happening on the ground, the world is changing. It is important um, for new Stars or leadership which need to emerge according to the change in time. So we need to stop the perennial tutorial forms of leadership. It is important to have freedom for the women who have been for operation and that and also to be able to get equity. It is important for us to keep fighting together, that it is important for those who have been exploited, women of the community from different backgrounds and minorities and the LGBTI community. It is important to understand their challenges. It is through our own self-reflection or try to understand ourselves better. It is important to also to give uh, that, um, you know, friendship as well as on the empathy and uh, that empathy and the handing out for equity for the other as well. By holding on to the form, the notions of equity, it is important to fight together in this revolution to get rid of the dictatorial systems once and for all. Thank you. And that um, so that I would like to give her uh, um, give uh, invite another speaker, Makima Mato. Can you uh, give any recommendation and also share your perspective on the particular topic? Thank you for inviting me. Now the spring revolution against the military dictatorship has gained uh, momentum, but uh, with the eradication of the um, to eradicate the military the military dictatorship, we are facing uh, different forms of atrocity committed by the military, and uh, we are greatly saddened to hear about the killing, about the burning of the villages, and you know that all the violence atrocity committed by the military is make us really sad for being a citizen of Myanmar. 
it is important that uh, we win this revolution as soon as possible to us uh, to to eradicate the military dictatorship and build the future nation of Myanmar. And I wish uh, we could be there as soon as possible so that um, the people will feel uh, safe and secure. It is also important for the IDPs, IDPs who have been running away because of the fighting, because of the vanning. We are also seeing a dramatic increase in the IDPs. IDP situation is worse than that of the CDM mass because they have been uh, forced to move and that uh, we all, that uh, their situation is also in bad. And, uh, there are also women fighters in the armed resistance as well. The longer the revolution takes, it will be harder not only for the CDM but also for the IDP as well as and the freedom fighters. So we want the national community to support the revolution. We know that there has been uh, some support to the revolution, to the, to the brutal democratic forces, but we need to eradicate the military dictatorship in Myanmar only then will be able to uh the will be able to do that as well it is only then that we can also uh that uh, we can also end the, all that um, suffering of the people so it is important to give uh, effective and support uh, to be able for us to end the military dictatorship that's what i do recommend and that's all i do request from the international community so dr miawi you it's your turn to give any closing remarks Yes, lastly, I recommend, not really a recommendation, but what I would like to share is to our national unity government, because we are under the leadership of the government, we live under the guidance of our government, and the government is uh, is a leader in the democratic era. so we are also doing what we can. We support the revolution in Myanmar, for Myanmar to be able to regain its freedom and independence, as well as on the democracy, we do what we can to contribute. Mackenzie Namu and other speakers, Papa has also shared that uh, that beyond the revolution, we also need to think about it. Beyond the revolution, the new government that came to power have to do a lot of rebuilding the nation as well. And during the rebuilding the nation, it is important to bear in mind that that uh, that what we that the what the point that we have made is about the women as well as on the minorities, minority as in ethnic minorities, religious minority or minority due to their sexual orientation. It is important to think about all the minorities as well, and that uh, it is important to ensure that the government have a policy to protect uh, to protect the rights of the minorities and ensure there is equity for us and in rebuilding the nation uh, government alone cannot do this it is important uh, for all the people of Myanmar to follow the guidelines and the policy of the government and we need to be part of the change uh, so that the change can really take place and then we can reach the goal because you know a, a building a nation of nation of freedom and equity can only be done in awards it is important to be part of the act as well that part of our action part of what we do because we need to remind ourselves of the ideological brainwash that we have been suffering under for many years we need to get ourselves back on the right track along with the political system along with the mindset as well it is also important to pay that to also to get there is a there is also the justice and punishment for the lives that have been lost of them during this revolution the innocent lives that has been lost that do have suffered i think they should also be fair justice and punishment against the perpetrator as well. Thank you for your words because you're asking also for justice and accountability on the revolution. Thank you for that. We now have listened to uh, the recommendations or that uh, recommendations or the points, uh, the last points made by our three speakers as in line with the, uh, the today's event in honor of the International Women's Day as well as uh, that talk, talk about important changes that we need to make in our way of thinking. Thank you to all our three speakers. It has been incredible to listen to you. It has uh, been incredible to learn from you and also share different perspectives as well. We'd like to thank you for being here and the giving us the time as well. So we are at a certain time. We also have a few questions from the participants. So we'd like to give a chance to the question and answer. 
here, one of the speakers, uh, said, one of the participants has said that uh, that uh, everyone should have, a, everyone should uh, they have a equal opportunities, equal, uh, uh, the human rights as well. And that, uh, that uh, the participant also has shared that since the 1st of February, the beginning of the coup, he just eat a portion of small, small portion of rice and an egg and a fried egg for that, you know, to do that as well. And that um, Nyanlin also made the point that equality and equity are different. Uh, according to the, they, they say that there are also some uh, dilemma, this debate on the intellectual among the intellectuals about the traditions and ethnicity, but uh, the, it will it will be very much depend on the compassion as well as on the kindness as well. That uh, that uh, that uh, we it is important. Uh, we also need to talk about the about the, the, the about the STEM soldiers as well as and that others leaders. But we get the, you have also discussed a lot about the important point. But it's important to don't forget that uh, people have been the victims of the system that we grew up in and that also another point made by the participant is that uh, that um, and that uh, the issue is that that, that, that because so the education system in Myanmar has been corrupted, has been destroyed, and leading to people being um, ignorant as well. So here we have a question um, that uh, among the so the question is that uh, patriarchal as uh, about uh, is there is there much patriarchal attitudes and sexism in the among the youth, CSOs and activists? How do you see it? I think maybe Maki Dana, uh, that uh, Maki Dana Mo, uh, you are also working closely with the activists. So can you answer this question? Do you see much patriarchal attitudes and sexism in the uh, among the youth? Can you repeat the question? Yes. The question is that um, you know in the youth um, that uh, you know among the activists and civil societies, um, are you is there much uh, patriarchal attitudes and sexism? In my my personal opinion, and that uh, you know we don't see much in the among this community, among this circle as well, and that's why we are also pushing hard to fight. We are also rallying other people to fight against uh, patriarchy to end patriarchy in our society. That's why we are pushing along with the revolution. We are doing what we can to fight not only the dictators but also the patriarchy system as well. I think among the youth, the patriarchal attitudes or sexism uh, will be will be will be low. We cannot say no. There isn't any uh, any better. Uh, like uh, Makedana was said, youth are leading the movement and calling for the calling for the opposition of patriarchy system. So we will say that it's uh, very limited. But other speakers, feel free to if you have anything to add, just raise your hand. I will call on you. So second question is that is there a hotline for women on the at the at the border? So hotline line as in, as in like uh, when a women are facing emergency issue they have a need so they have issue that like uh, so example if for example like women are suffering from de depression or they are suicidal then is there a hotline they can call to ask for assistance or ask to chat does is there is there such a hotline or do you want to see such a hotline exist speakers maybe I think I don't see any hands from the speakers, but for the based on our experience, so sister from sister sister group, and the um, and the people's school team, I don't think uh, there is a hotline at the borders in the borders area. But there is a hotline from the women organization. But this hotline is mainly for mainly for women inside the, inside Myanmar. We have a hotline from Gender Equality Network, Gen, and we also there are also a legal support and counsel for women as well. In sister to sister web page, uh, page Facebook page, we are also posting about this, so you can also check it out. And this question we have received that: uh, Do you think there should be a mental competency test for all male leaders over seventy years of age? That's a very interesting question. For you know, um, for male leaders over seventy years old, should there be a mental competency test? So that to check their their their, their performance, psycho, their psychological performance. Uh, so is there should there be a test uh, that? Uh, what do you think, our speakers? Any response? Maybe Doctor Miawiji wants to respond to respond to this question. So it is also about health. Maybe Mackin Babaton will also be able to respond. To it. So the, the test about mental competency. Okay, okay, I will try to respond to that question. Maybe, Dr. Miawi, you want to answer the question? 
Yes, so over 70 years, when you say, well, if some, for me, I don't think if somebody is over 70 years, so I don't think they need to have take a medical competence and depth. That means a person who has a lot of experience, uh, political experience, and that uh, professional experience, life experiences too. So I don't think that's why they have been selected as leaders. So I don't think they are fine as well. If they have a mental problem, then they wouldn't be, they wouldn't be able to lead they won't be able to take on the leadership role as well. So I think the the fact that they have been elected as a, and they 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 have been appointed a leader is because they have the ability ability to do that. So maybe you don't need to run COVID as it does. Yes. So the question was about the male leader, so that uh, for all male leaders should have, uh, you know, mental competency test. So I think Papa has, Papa also said that that mental competency tests, uh, yeah, well, that if they have uh, like a problem, then that's one thing. And then if you are uh, leading, um, to lead a country, I think they, they, we all need to think about their medical problems too, as well, that, uh, like for example, like they could have a medical problem if they have a Parkinson disease and that uh, and that and also for that as well medical is that that it is not just about the mental confidence that you should also need to check about it as well and that some people um that when they are over 70 years old they still be able to retain their full competency as well so mental competency is not just about the mental issue there could be other medical problems which are which are like impeding them from doing their job as well so that uh, you know it's not that oh you're over 70 years old you must take a competent competency test and that only then you're if you're fit that you can know that those who are in the political leading position they will i'm sure they will have a political um you know the position spirit as well if you don't have any experience that of course you're not um, you know you're, you're not and you're, you're not be able to you know not have the skills that to, to lead their country. So I think it should be, it will be not just on the mental issue, but also on the, the, the on the health problems as well. And also need to take into consideration. I think um, according to the, the question, um, the leading, I'm just uh, trying to interpret the question from the question could be that mental competence are for all male leaders. We're not talking about the revolutionary leaders. We're probably talking about the military because in the military, there are people who are over, you know, over in the late 60s, nearly 70, and the fact that such leaders are still in position in that uh, that that also means that um, that uh, that they, they become the leaders of a institution like a institution like a military and that um, you know they are over 70, they are nearly 70 years old and the fact that they are still in the leader position that means how that count in that uh, you know that the violent uh, could they be uh, to the people that how that um, you know they ignore as well so I think I would like to also like to add a few points and I would like the speakers also to respond to that as well because you know for every for everyone both physical and mental health is important because I think it is important to do check as well because people have a different abilities to face and cope with different situations so I think it might be better if we do if we do a check if we do check ourselves to make sure that we are doing it as well. I think you're referring about the psycho test, met, met, met that, um, you know, mental competency test as that, uh, is that uh, also that uh, mental competency test, uh, rather than mental competency, this could be, um, that they, there could be some kind of psychological test as well, that a psychological test is, uh, that is uh, the way they, the way they use is that uh, often the way they have responded, the military has responded to that by violence and the extreme use of violence against the people is that, this like a, that the, the way they add is that like that of psychopath you know they go they're showing psychopathic uh, behavior so maybe they need a psychological test to make sure they are uh, right. to test their sanity or the you know use of violence i think that uh, it is also that um, it, that we have to be mindful of the stress and the pressure that we have we have as well it is important to talk to therapists or the exactly. psychiatrists or the work on the physical and not only the physical but also the mental well-being because the mental well-being is also important and that of our revolution leaders mental well-being is important because this way we can will have a, the the new that revolution leaders who are not only physically fit but also mentally able to uh, do that as well so i think these are the questions we have received in the q a so we like to invite uh, we have a one per, one participant who has uh, who has asked permission to speak is it are you still here Kunyani? Kunyani, i see you now so 
do you have a question? Please introduce yourself and also please state your question and also indicate which speaker you would you want to you uh, you you uh, you you want a question to answer. Could Nyanin please Nyanin please go ahead. Your question or comments or feel free to add your comments too. Nyanin, you have you you have been given the microphone. You have been given the permission to speak. You can unmute yourself and talk. We can't hear you now. You're still muted. And if you have difficulty speaking, feel free to type it in the chat box and we can uh, help, help you can hear me now. Yes, we can hear you now. So the problem in Myanmar is we have a lot of sexual violence. We are also, to uh, let me have a very open discussion online as well. So there are also like online uh, chat and that um, and that is also uh, that uh, women are also you know, being victimized as well. And that uh, women are often uh, sometimes are over dependent. Women depend too much on their, their husband or their head of the households, so to speak. Another point I would like to raise about education. Education is important. But we also see we also have a lot of issues with the humanitarian cases. And if we look at the crisis, crisis in Iran. So when we see the movement has led to led to women so losing their rights. So I just want to add a few points. The panelists have mentioned as well. Like in Armeni, if you like Armeni, it's like you know that. Uh, and that uh, because uh, you know that if they when they um when the the, the Syrian woman she was uh, tortured and she was killed uh, because her hijab was she was not wearing her hijab was and that's also women right issue. We need to look at not only at the locally what is happening inside Myanmar it is so important but but the globally as well what is happening on the world as well. In Myanmar often women often are so you know using uh, that is they are using uh, they are using um, there are also problems of women using drug abuse as well. And that, uh, and that as well, that women also have a lot of uh, challenges too, because uh, women, uh, women are poor. So that, uh, and that, uh, that is also is can also be a difficulty as well, and that uh, they also have uh, suffered greatly as well. That, uh, and that uh, for that. Um, so that there is also that um, you know monogamy law that was uh, and at the end of the day, day we also talk about that uh, uh, Burmese eth ethnocentrism as well because uh, that uh, there's something is that the um, that, that military has always been using as well like uh, Dr. Bato uh, what Dr. Bato show I agree with you that I am a CDM engineer and that uh, I have joined the CDM as a, the CDM as a, from the from the SA as well and that like uh, we I joined the CDM I joined the CDM on the first of March that it was always so I, we are just a CDM the CDM must really so that um, you know that um, what we do that milit military don't give uh, six months of maternity leave but we do give six months of maternity leave and then with there has always been uh, the women and others you know oh, no no we we have given uh, we are given more uh, but uh, more uh, more uh, that uh, support for the women with the pregnant workers pregnant women but military that uh, that I only know that the military is uh, military is the inside that women inside the military are not getting the equal right as uh, you know if you work I would say this is discrimination I would say discrimination makes it easy for them to control because discrimination oppression is a very true in there with the military is that uh, there is a lot of discrimination as well that uh, and that uh, that we have seen also women being discriminated in our department as well that uh, and also that we that we what we also need to talk about is divide and rule so whether one we also there's another question is when it goes into the federalism is that um, you know it will it be equality will it be based on equality or equity but there are two things we know about in united states what kind of federalism does united states are we talking about federalism like uh, united states are we talking about federalism like india because uh it is their equity in the United States and that uh, and I would also like to recommend uh, that uh, freedom is an Indian movie called three seven fighters and that it's where we talk about uh, justice and law and there were some frictions and I would like to I think women should watch this film as well that uh, and that uh, you know that uh, you know that uh, you know it was uh, there was also uh, that uh, that as well in the in, when you talk about the law that uh, in Singapore the a woman was uh, you know um, you know um, you know that uh, ghosted online and she was uh, they know they, they met online and she was um, you know she was sexually exploited.
that in Singapore and that uh, that that the, the man who perpetrated was uh, was uh, arrested arrested just for uh, you know okay defamation or the you know uh, for the as a, for violating the modesty of a woman so this kind of thing we should also take into consideration I just want to talk about the Burmese ethnocentrism can I can I add this um, because I just want to share what I had uh, and that um, and the El Koyi's father, uh, I think, uh, yes, I, uh, that uh, I'll run. I think I've met only these people, and that um, you know, I have as a senior officials, I only met uh, like uh, you know, Major General, uh, Major General, the uh, uh, that. The, that um, uh, that um, uh, he, uh, uh, there was a major general Abel, uh, and then there was also another um, major general from Cochin community, who is the father of El Koyi, a, a singer in the past, in the 80s. They were the only two non Burma who had the senior official. I've never seen that as well. So we are seeing these are the cases of Burma ethnocentrism. I am Burma, but I don't have, I don't practice that. I don't practice also. Uh, that I'm going to. I think women also need to be, you know, a bit uh, more understanding as well, but because patriarchy system is much much related to the intellectual. Now we understand. Now we know more about it as well. I know about the LGBT community. It's a body shaming is wrong, and that it also depends on the general knowledge. It also depends on the level of education. In Myanmar, we never learn about the sexual education. Sexual education is, you know, taught to everyone worldwide according to different ages as well. What I'm saying is that, you know, some of the young children uh, that some of the young children got uh, pregnant and they are already married by the time they are four, 14 as well the system they have a yeah, baby and that uh, and these are the problems of a bad education system i would say yes that's what i'm saying so it is important to take that into consideration that like one of them was saying that uh, and that uh, uh, that we need to change the mindset we need to change the way of thinking as well for the islam uh, islam is for the islamic people of islamic faith they can they can marry as many wives that they want and it's not a problem but that's i mean we are saying that that with the with the faith and the with the belief religious beliefs and there are also issues internally uh, there are internal issues i think it's important to try to put them on the right track through the law and legal the policy and the energy and the Ministry of uh, Justice will need to do a lot as well. It is really important to be able to control the social media as well. And then, you know, there is a lot of we need to do because social media, there are a lot of things happening. Nobody can, no one can control the social media. So if you don't control the social media, you know, like, uh, okay, this person has had a famous young girl or that uh, maybe he shared, he was doing uh, that uh, he was he was sharing the pornographic images or videos of a woman because he was trying to do the revenge porn. Yes, but we have talked about the social media, that uh, social media yeah. that we know, we have seen uh, cases where we are you know, targeting um, that as well, that, that, that more the impact on the social media that, uh, it is uh, impo it also is. important to control it as well, but uh, that it is uh, that we will not see the understand that we need to control social media because to prevent it as well. But uh, you know, we have uh, each and everyone has a right to uh, freedom of speech and expression. But it should not be hate speech. It should not be abused to make hate speech. It should not also be not be. Uh, it should not uh, cause discrimination based on the based on birth or ethnicity or background. Mm. And that and it is uh, on the social media. How do you that uh, I think women should have a right independence and right to a right to decide as well. So in that, if we look at it from that perspective, we don't need to, we do do that um, you know do that so control the social media because it's all the free and free expression. Social media yeah. and uh, sexuality could be uh, something we need to discuss in another panel. Otherwise, you have raised what you take in consideration. So allow me to add something more that, for example, I you know the, the girls you know, who has been trafficked to the China, there's no international police and especially in China, there are many, you know, they just only use women as a, a baby making machine and you know, they, they sell and traffic get the women just to give birth for those Chinese male and then they feed uh, uh they forced them to breastfeed to their dog by the those lady i'm very sad that's why i decided to join this panel uh, start from the beginning to the end i can have nothing i'm a cdm it is very sad and very you know very tragic and in, in even in war 
women women broker with different ethnic city especially in Gachin and others you know who speak Chinese language they are the one who traffic it and they sell our girl out to China because of the poverty problem and because of the crisis and because of the fail stake and all the women are at risk not only in the sexual aspect you know many women are uh, facing uh, to, uh, even to commit social, social uh, uh, suicide commit suicide attempt nobody help them nobody inside the country and nobody out there to help we are just discussing on a panel but women in the real life on the grounds are facing enormous threats by sharing this when people get more knowledge i think it would at least encourage people to take appropriate action to stop that you know, some of the women you know i think yeah, even with a boyfriend girlfriend and uh, when they got married and uh, they face uh, they got a domestic violence oh there are tons of cases that you know housewife got domestic violence um, and you know that you know when that the uh, social media harassment uh, with the acts and then there are many cries uh, crimes and <clears throat> and the other problem is drug related problem that we need to consider in Myanmar women are using ketamine and you know going to club and that's a drug related uh, crimes you know that's uh, uh, that kinds of uh, psychology abnormally and you know they don't know what is right and what is wrong and they just committing you know they are uh, uh, suffering the consequences you know when uh, uh, along the border in China in Mu Zedong uh, many women got drug and forced to do you know we need a general general knowledge and international support equality and equity is totally different in the borderline uh, to have a to achieve equity and uh, you need to have a beautiful heart with high intellectual for that we need to educate the whole country to the setting level uh, to achieve the equity if not so yes that is the goal we are aiming to go so we need to start from the individual big and that's why we organize this panel you know we need to educate each other we need uh, peer to peer education like kunyan lin said he's very uh empathy for the women you know to organize you know many women you know they thought that oh, oh many male counterparts they thought there is nothing to do with that you know yes the international women did nothing to do with male but thanks kunyan lin for joining from start to the beginning we need male champion and thank you so much for Gunyan Lin and then very appreciate you have concern for a woman and you stand up for a woman and you're the male champion and then I would that is the most beautiful conclusion for this panel you know you stand up as a male counterpart you are the male champion of this uh, revolution how are we going to fight against evil uh, ideologies to ensure equality and freedom and equity uh, to achieve our revolution our goal and now it's already nine o'clock and and all our public who are listening and rolling up to it i would like to say thank you to all the male counterpart we need more male champion we consider all the male counterpart as uh, our allies you are the champions to fight against the privilege and first you need to aware what privilege you're enjoying and then best use of that privileged position to contrib contribute for the revolution as Matanda said from this day on we'll continue and allow me to conclude today's discussion uh, today panel here and i would like to say thank you to all the public and all the speakers of Ramya Wutyi, Maken Danda and Maken Baba who would like to express our deepest appreciation for your contribution and allow me us to conclude our sister to sister uh uh dialogue uh, let's see you again on the sunday again thank you so much
Yeah. 